five. Greg Fleming, welcome to Talking Music with New Zealand Musician. Hi, Richard. How are you? Good, man. Thank you. Good, good. Um, and we're talking about Get Off at Lincoln, the fourth album from you and your band, The Working Poor. I think, actually, good. I think it's the fifth. Is it really? Okay. I, might, I might have added it. That, that would be good I've, if I've you forgotten. made the mistake. Yeah. Me. That would be helpful. <laughs> it's, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the fifth. The last time we, New Zealand Musician, um, reviewed a Greg Fleming album, the reviewer described the music then as perfected working man's blues rock, and then he added country tinged. So it wasn't the last album, I'll admit. Other yeah. times you've been you've been badged as a, um, a pioneer of old country rock in New Zealand, um, urban folk, noir is a common enough term. Describing Get Off at Lincoln yourself, you you use the term blue sky pop in one track, and there is yeah. certainly pop in there. Yeah. So, question: When a stranger at a party asks asks you, how do you tend to describe your music these days? Well, I mean, I listen to a whole lot of lot of music, but I guess the the music we've we've made with the working poor, uh, I guess it's, it's, it's basically rock and roll. There's more of a kind of soul and blues and hip hop tinge to the to the new album. So it's quite diverse. I think that, that's what people have said to me. It, you know, there, there's there's a whole lot of genres there, but it still sounds like us. So, you know, as I, as, I, as as I think I mentioned to you, we we every time we record an album, I say to the guys, look, I want to I want to make a hip hop album, and I do one day, and it'll probably be awful, but what we do do is incorporate things like like hip hop and soul. I love R and B soul and put it into what we do and it comes out different and it comes out like us. So if you go back over over all the albums, whatever whatever you say about them, I think there's a consistency there to the sound and and that consistency doesn't mean it's dull, it's it's moved on and changed, but there is a consistency to the to those guys and and I'm very lucky to work with those guys in a room um, playing and we basically Play live to for ninety percent. That's that's band in a room playing. So that, that's kind of a unique thing these days too, in many ways. Right. Yeah. Might just for the sake of the video mention the the name of the working poor. The names um, rather Andrew Thorne on guitar, John Segovia guitar, Nick Dewars on Dewars, piano, yep. and Mark Hughes bass, and uh, Wayne Bell the master on drums five top quality musicians and, and I'm guessing friends and, and peers yeah. well I've known I've known Wayne and Andrew for many years uh, worked with them since the 90s um, Mark too uh, Nick was a more recent kind of last since 2012 Andrew brought Nick in Nick's an amazing pianist mm. he used to play with Paulie Fumana he used to tour with Paulie and amongst other things he's a he's a very sought after music teacher, um, so you know I'm the I'm by far the least accomplished musician in the band, and so I say, what's that chord there? And someone will say, oh, that's A seven diminished. I go, okay, cool. Yeah, so it's a real, real privilege to work with those guys. And yeah, we are friends, and yeah, you know, it's hard to get everyone in a room together. Everyone's on different schedules, and so how, and do, other you, how do you do it? Are, are you a once a month get together? Yeah, pretty outfit? much less than that sometimes. So. And the other thing I like about this band is you don't want to come across as it's too accomplished. So what we do is we hardly practice. So we for this album we practice maybe three times and then we went in and did the whole record. Because these a band like this, if, if they get too comfortable, they it's too comfortable. So they always kind of just keep things a little bit um, uncertain. And, and you know, like get off Lincoln, We'd only done that a few times. Still blue, we'd only played it once before we went in and did it. That's the Sky Blue Pop mm. song. Um, yeah, so I think that spontaneity, keeping that is, is really key. Keeping mistakes is key. Uh, yeah. But you obviously at a point work up the songs and yeah. and how much of the musical content of those parts do you deliver to them or gui guidelines do you deliver to the, deliver them in the working up of a yeah of I, a track I basically four recording? I bring in a song pretty much finished they might say oh, well that we'll, we'll put that bridge there or change that chorus or do that chorus twice 
like Wayne really liked a certain chorus and Don't Like Me, he said, look, put that, do that twice there. Uh, we don't need to do that here, or, you know, whatever it might be. So everyone and, and all the band kind of contribute. Um, mm. So it's a, you know, we, It'll be hard to stop them. Yeah, yeah, and, and I, I welcome it, you know. So it's, uh, yeah, it's fun. it's fun. So when you look at the five albums, the five Working Poor albums, um, do you see it as a progression or is it are you just on a on a kind of a some musical wave that that suits the the, the time well I, I think i think i want i think there's a body of work there that you just mm. add to at this stage um you know, we're not looking to be pop stars or rock stars um by this time all that's very much been beaten out of us or me uh so i i think it's just this is what I do, this is what I enjoy doing, and this is what I'm good at. I'm good at a few other things, but I'm not going to be remembered for those. You know what I mean? Like, writing songs, whether whether I do the songs or someone else does them in the future, uh, the songs kind of will, will outlive will outlive all of us. And, you know, there's a lot of songs that are forgotten. And it may be, you know, if a couple of songs are remembered are you big in cool. Sinkland like uh, I can imagine uh, Shortland we've, Street or whatever uh, well, um, we enjoy, have been using since. your music given it's New Zealand and specifically Auckland focus yeah we have been synced um, but it's not, not not a massive amount of, to be honest I haven't really put a lot of energy into into that but uh, that's essentially that's how you make music uh, money these yeah, days in music. yeah so the fact you haven't put energy into that is what humility or or laziness or, uh, or no I mean we we, we are, we're with Songbroker and we're, I'm with an American publisher as well um, and we've had some success there but you know it's it's not a lot yeah I was surprised to um, to read that on the um, Get Off at Lincoln the album's title track you say in your own line of notes that it's the first time you'd played electric guitar in about a decade. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> how I, how I could that possibly be? Well, I don't even own an electric guitar anymore. Um, Clearly. So it was just, we were mixing it. We weren't going to put another guitar on because there's already way, uh, John and Andrew yeah. on there and me on acoustic. And I just thought it needed needed something else and it was just Ollie and I in the, in the studio and I said, look, can I go and just do a guitar track? So he set up one of his guitars and threw it through an amp there, and we just turned it up really loud, and just I just played it a couple of times, and and that's what we got out of it. But clearly, in a decade, you've never felt the need to have an amplifier and, and blast some new new or even an old song of yours yourself. Yeah, I, not, no, not really. But but I miss it. So I, I mean, I think I might I might look at you know borrowing someone's guitar and. Um, having a bash because I certainly listen to a lot of electric yeah. guitar music rather than probably more than acoustic music and you know I enjoyed enjoyed bashing that one out it was great do you have a favourite acoustic that you, you do play all the time or you write on uh, yeah I, I write on a, an old Mar uh, Sigma Martin which I've had for ever but live I play Tacky Mini um, yeah. and what do you like about the Tone. I mean, is, are you a tone guy? Do you do you uh, like those guitars for specific reasons? No, it's just it's just I've written all these songs on that guitar, so yeah. it's got a history. It's banged up. It's, it's certainly it's not particularly valuable. It sounds good. Um, yeah, this that's the one. It's got right. all those songs in it for whatever um, reason. You're you're a bit of an uh, uh, I guess in, in your songs lyrically you're. you're you, you easily and readily paint great images and this album in particular has got a heavy uh, West Auckland focus Lincoln Road providing all the uh, the hip hop styled lyrics for My Hope My Hope, uh, yeah by way of example I think it's you know as a songwriter you're, you're definitely something of an urban poet uh, I've seen I've seen that description elsewhere and, and you love looking into the dark corners and uh, personal tragedies and yet Yet, just seeing and describing beauty in the mundane. I wonder, though, if it's less about poetry and more about actual short story writing in your songs. If you're, if mm. that's where oh, you come to songwriting. I yeah, I just write. I'm a, I guess a storyteller. <clears throat> um, I, I like those writers and, and 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 songwriters that are really direct. And Lou Reed, James McMurtry. Um, 
you know, Carol King for the melodies and um, just yeah, a whole lot of stuff. Hip hop, Vince Staples. You know, there's a lot of really interesting politically driven stuff. Steve Earle's a big influence. Springsteen. Um, yeah, so I guess storytellers and, and writers influence me too. I, I'm, you know, um, big crime fiction fan, noir fan. So a lot of those writers often concentrate on a certain place, whether the city. Um, and and I've written about Auckland and you know in a, in a similar kind of way for I guess all all throughout all mm. those records. I think there's God eight eight of them. So I guess it's like that body of work thing. You're just adding to it now. You can you know and I return to characters and songs. Like I know who the guy f- in Get Off at Lincoln is, and he's the guy from. Edge of the, uh, song and um, Edge of the City, but no one else is going to know that, and they don't need to know yes. that. But I, I have characters that come, come and go, you know, in the songs, and, and I and, and saying that they are real characters or they are no, the characters that you well they're based on yeah, a, yeah, a whole lot, yeah, you know, yeah what, exactly. what people you know, right. experiences you've had, and things you see out there. Yeah, yeah. So um, in parts of the city, you. you um, I think, I don't know if the entirety of the lyrics, but certainly a chunk of them are drawn from um, some time you spent in San Francisco. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, that's and, great. And I think other parts of this album, you know, show that you're reflecting on, on time spent travelling elsewhere. Do you keep a songwriting no- notebook and, and, and take those sort of ideas and encounters down of an evening? Or, or do those kind of memories somehow just return when a song needs them? Yeah, I think it's the latter, um, uh-huh. Richard, to be honest. Um, there's that, you know, the cover to, to Hell With These Streets was taken from that time in San Francisco. Um, so um, I really like that cover. Um, it's probably one of my favourite albums that we've done. It's quite dark, but, but, you know, I think as we go on, the next album's got a lot of songs to do with outside of New Zealand, especially time spent in America. So, you know, that's another thing. I mean, and some of that's come into this record as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I think parts of the city, as I, as I, as I think I wrote, I, I got lost kind of wandering around San Francisco. I was a tourist, you know, mm. I was just wide-eyed tourism. And, and, it, and it's such a small city, you can wander into some really interesting parts without really knowing it, and before you know, and that's what happened. And the Tenderloin is is a really vibrant kind of place, but it's probably not the safest place, even at 10 a.m. in the morning. Which, uh, uh, so you know, it was it was a it gave an it gave you a sense of what the under underbelly of America is like. And San Francisco is full of homeless people and vet, war veterans, and you know, it's it's a it's an interesting place, and a lot of America. I've, I've found that's what I'm interested in that kind of dichotomy mm. I mean, mm. Mm. yeah optimists everyone's an optimist in America seems to me a lot of people even Op- if they, they shouldn't yeah, have any right to be between optimist <laughs> and, and opportunist right optimist so, yeah, and fantasist yeah, yeah fantasist yeah. yeah that too maybe that yeah. <laughs> I think I do, do um, know what you mean though yeah <laughs> So yeah, I mean uh, that 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 song was just we started it off as a band song, and then it was kind of okay, it didn't really grab me. So we just went in and Nick and I did that basically live while the other guys went out out and had coffee. Um, as, as, yeah, I, I think we kind of kind of t- touched on something on that one. So how long did you need in the studio to get uh, get all the tracks of get off at Lincoln down? Uh, that most of that was one day. That was most of that was in five hours. So it was just one, two, three, four. So it's song after song. We come back and I spent the only time the band was in the studio was that one day. I think Nick, I think Wayne and a couple Mark came back for another day, and that was it. Yeah, we actually had two other songs we didn't put on here, which we might return to one day. So I, I just think keeping it short, sharp powerful 
um, Don't Outstay You're Welcome. So it's nine songs. Um, yeah, but mostly pretty much done and recorded to tape in a day. Greg, it's a really good album. So Oh, thank you. Whether it had taken two weeks, it would still it would have been a great album, but to have, <laughs> have got all that that quality and diversity and, and interest down in one day, that's extraordinary. Well done. Thanks. Well, I mean, we mixed and I overdubbed a couple more days, say so three days, four yep. days, probably all up, so, and mastering but it just, one day. It's a, a wonderful testament to skilled musicians, skilled engineer, and and songwriting that everybody's kind of obviously getting in behind. And not wor- you know, not worried about being perfect vocally for me, and and that's something I think I've learned from because Edge of the City took weeks, which was a 2012 album, mm-hmm. which had been um, recorded after a big break, and now you know we just move on, and uh, that's what it is. That's those songs live that's when they existed and yeah. you know, if someone wants to listen to them and gets value out of them that's cool so will you be performing them live yeah we're, we're looking at we're trying to figure out some stuff um, but yeah we'll just finally I'll get out there solo or the band or both just still just to, you know teeing some stuff up alright yeah. all the best with it man Great. Really thanks Richard cheers